Lord, to prepare the way for the coming of your Son. Give us courage and faith to proclaim in word and deed the good news of your coming, even as we wait in patience for that day when Christ will come again. Amen. In this season, we are listening to the song of Mary and tonight we have someone singing the song in a new way. So let us hear, wait and hear. Nations range from age to age. We remember who holds us fast. God's mercy must deliver us from the conqueror's crushing grasp. This saving word that our Lord has heard is the promise which holds us bound. Till the spear and rod can be crushed by God who is turning the world around. My heart shall see. Tears for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. By the way, all tears for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. <laughs> wasn't that fun whoa nice. yeah. so when we hear this song of mary what how is this portrayed what do you hear in this song what are what are the things that touched you as you heard them sing that the world is about to turn the world's about Something's to turn. going to happen right 
So much of the time in Mary's Magnificat, it's about turning, um, turning in a new way, the low being lifted high, the high being brought low, the empty being filled, the filled being emptied. A, different, a, way, a new way of the world is coming about and, and turning. And so there's that, um, that element that really comes through with this. Other things you noticed. It yes. sounds joyful. It was a joyful, she is very joyful yeah, she was really um, joyful. song, the singing, having the family sing it together. Uh, sometimes Mary's song is sung more um, plaintively, longingly. This song was done with great joy. You could see someone dancing to it. And, mm -hmm. um, and actually it is from a folk melody. So that's another thing that it's adapted to a folk melody which is a song of the people, the folk songs of the people. And so it's Mary's song adapted to that. It's a joyful dancing song. Yes. Good one. Other things you noticed? Notice that um, in this song that the, that uh, there was an emphasis in the words and it always is in Mary's song, but sometimes we can miss it. An emphasis on justice. And justice in the biblical sense is that all people, and in, in let's say the Gospel of Luke where Mary's um, Magnificat is, when the high are brought low and the low are brought high, all people meet eye to eye on level ground. And that is one of the ways that the biblical sense of justice, of people meeting in relationship on level ground, being together in that reality. And so Mary's song sings of the hope of all people coming together, all people being satisfied, their longings being met, and, um, and the joy of that coming, of God bringing that into God's work. Other things that you noticed? <clears throat> so... I wanted, because, because of the justice theme, I want to thank the family singing that song was so fun to have all of them singing like that it was such a neat thing. Thanks for getting that arranged, Nancy, too. And, but the, it was so, um, the, what reminded me um, this time as I was thinking of this song was a story um, when I did a sabbatical on Sacred Place. Um, my family and I went to Italy to visit a friend of mine who had been an exchange student in our house when I was in high school. She had come from Italy and she lived with us and we've become and stayed close friends all these years. Um, we went to visit her and went to her house in the mountains and she knew that I was doing a study of sacred places. So she said, I wanna take you to a place that has been um, sacred to me. We went up on a gondola up to the top of the mountain at this, in this area that she lived. And we walked to a very small chapel that was on top of this mountain in the ski area. Yeah. That usually this chapel is the end of a pilgrimage that where you would start way in the village and you'd walk clear up the mountain and it would take um, a long day of hiking and we just went on the gondola so we didn't get the pilgrimage experience. But she said we would come into this chapel and we came into this kind of dark um, chapel at the top of the thing and then she points to the altar and she points to a picture behind the altar that I don't know how many hundreds of years old and she said to me um, kind of whispered it she said that's the black Madonna and she said I come here to be with her now I had never from my um, background and you know I had never heard of the black Madonna but I so I said to Anna my friend I said um uh, what, what significance is she? What is she? Who is she? She said, this is the Madonna who visits the poor and she goes to meet the poor in the, in the worst of all circumstances. She comes to meet people and she is there. And <clears throat> so it was a few years after that that I was in sort of a study of 
of feminine reflections of the divine. And one of these um, series was about um, the visitations of the Black Madonna all over the world, that there are many people in poverty who see Mary coming to them, Mary visiting them, um, and that she, she, and when she comes, oftentimes, um, um, so I had, I found um, a picture that I've had up in my office and I keep in my office now. I got this in Santa Fe by a woman who also, uh, as a reminder of, of her presence, but when she goes to these communities all over, when people see her and notice her, it's not like she does anything fantastic. What it is is that she is present there. She shows up and she sees them and regards them in, in their situation. And that, um, that is enough. That is enough to be seen, to be regarded, to be um, recognized as a person, to be loved. Um, that uh, to be to be present. Um, this Saturday is Our Lady of Guadalupe Day, actually, and this is the. Many of you may have been down to been to Santa Fe in New Mexico, where oftentimes Our Lady of Guadalupe is pictured. And this is one of the visitations of what I would say the Black Madonna to a Mexican peasant in, um, in Guadalupe. And he, she, he, the peasant was visited, the Madonna came, and the peasant decided to build a chapel in that spot. And that, that has been a place of visitation and honoring of God. And it helped to um, um, raise the people up to help from their poverty is the story. But um, I don't know, I, the wild, you know, uh, um, uh, why do I tell this? Um, part of it, what, what, why I tell it is because for me, the importance of the Black Madonna is if she reminds me of the importance of presence, of, of, of being there, of seeing, of seeing people, of regarding people, and of, and of the power of that for people who have been invisible, unrecognized, or their situation is unknown. And that in many ways, being present to people like that brings, is a, is a way that begins the process of justice. Because once people see each other in their circumstances, things happen and begin to happen in relationship between each other as the low are lifted high and the high come low in order to meet each other, new things be can begin to happen because of those connections and relationships. Another story I have about this, which just now occurred to me, is a story about a young woman. This was, this was took place in a year, several years ago, I read her book. She was, um, had just graduated from graduate school and was in Africa and she was a jogger. She was um, in a major city in Africa. She was jogging down the street when she saw one of the residents, one of, a little boy on the side of the street who was wearing a sweater. And this sweater had a funny giraffe on it. And she knew and recognized the sweater as one that she had donated in in a donation to Goodwill a number of years before. She goes to this boy and, you know, and just practically um, he's afraid of her. He doesn't know what to do to have this jogger mm -hmm. topping, but she goes and she checks the sweater to make sure. And sure enough, her name was in the back of that sweater. And she saw that as a, as a sign, so to speak, a sign of connection with this um, young boy and with this community. And she'd been trained in economics and as a banker. And she began to find ways to um, fund different people in their businesses in order to start new ways of people getting out of poverty because of that connection. 
So being present can have power and connection and bring new things about in so many ways that we must not discount it, but, um, but value it and the value of being regarded. That's Mary's message um, tonight. Tonight, um, Mayor Amy reminded me that many of us have people that we probably want to be to pray for um, this evening um, and um, concerns that we have on our hearts and minds. And so I want to open it to you to, um, to your prayers. Are there, are there prayer requests that you have this evening that we can begin and pray together? Your son Timothy. Your son Timothy, okay. He's going back through um, scans and tests to see if his cancer is coming back or not. Jeez, Pam. And also our son Jeremy, <laughs> who's getting better from the COVID, but he still has severe depression. I had uh, Mary Stevenson's son, who's uh, starting treatment for melanoma this mm -hmm. week. I think his name is Patrick. I think so. Yes. Mm -hmm. Patrick. For our very weary healthcare workers, Sure. I'd like to offer prayers for um, um, Bonnie, a friend of mine who's both her sister's in ICU and then her cat is, who is her really her support companion is dying and she's, she's having a, a struggling with that. And for ML, who's another friend of mine who um, just had a, a brain tumor surgery and is recovering um, well, but is alone and, and trying to keep her spirits up. Anyone else? All right, let us, let us pray together. Oh, living God, as we light two candles this day, we remember we are remain in a time of longing, longing to see the path that you lead us towards, giving thanks for your presence as guide. We give you thanks for the message of Mary, for the hope, for the joy that is in her song. We pray that Mary's song may be our song as we live our life, watching the way you work in the world and trusting as you work in our lives as well. We pray for all who are isolated, all of us in this time of COVID for all of us who long for relationships, for being together. And we pray that you would strengthen us and guide us in ways to be loving in the midst of all of this and ways to give thanks in the midst of all these circumstances. We pray for those who need healing from their fear, people who need your caring touch that they may hope again. And we lift to you Timothy and Jeremy, Jim and Pam. We pray for Mary's son, Patrick. We pray for Bonnie and ML. 
We pray for health care workers who are weary and in need. And we pray for those people who are confined to prisons, who are living in situations where they cannot be away, for people who are required workers, for people who live in poverty and are frightened for daily survival. The living God, we entrust our lives to you, trusting that your spirit in power turns this world around so that all may rejoice in the goodness of this life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may God bless you and keep you May God's face shine on you. And grant you favor as well as peace. Amen. 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 Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you. So, yes, you also. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.